welcome to my channel. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue. My name is Lynn and I'm 100% the hot mess with all the hot glue. Without further ado, let's just go have some fun and get into the crafts. In today's video, we're going to do some Halloween crafts. I kind of just chose to do a little bit of everything in, in, to some respect. Now, I had a lot of fun using just some random materials and I kind of did some crafts that were just slightly out of my usual, which made it that much more fun. The first project I'm going to show you here is this witch kind of cut out and she's got her cauldron. Now I wanted to make a pretty substantial piece to hang above our dining room table and I thought this would be a really good starting point. I had a large canvas that was gifted to me by my neighbor and I had already painted it black sometime back for a different project that I just didn't end up using. And I thought Halloween is as good a time as any to pull out this pre-painted black canvas to use as our backdrop. So getting started here, I really wanted to add just a little bit of dimension. I didn't want this to be just a witch and her cauldron. I wanted it to have some personality. And so I thought that by using some hot glue and creating kind of a dripping cauldron potion effect that that would help. Now, the only downside to this, which I didn't realize it at the time until I got to the painting portion was, it was just a little bit more difficult to paint it. It was a little bit more time consuming. I will personally say that in the end, I felt that that detail was completely worth it. I went through and did a top layer of white Waverly chalk paint to give it kind of a base coat. Once that dried, I went back over it with the same green I used on her on her face, which is Pale Green by Arteza. I used your typical chalkboard black paint to paint the rest of the wood piece here, the cauldron included, and just kind of went through it. It was nice because it really only took one coat. Now, I also had this wood round and it says trick or treat on it, but I didn't want the additional frame. However, I also didn't want to lose this frame. So taking my craft knife, I just kind of carefully went through, scored it a few times, and I then broke the blade on my X-Acto knife. Now this was my fault. I was absolutely being lazy and I grabbed a knife that was right near me and it did not have the proper blade on it so I do not suspect that this would really be an issue if you're using the proper uh I felt that the number 11 blade worked best on this now it just took a couple scores and then it all popped off once I got that off I had originally thought that I was going to do the hot glue effect on this portion as well however it was just a little too time consuming and it kind of took away from some of that fun and that kind of instant gratification of a quick and easy project so i opted out of using the hot glue on this portion and just painted it with again the same green pale green color that i have from arteza now i got the arteza paints in like a a big set they're just kind of like little tester paints and so I've had them for quite some time and I don't want them to go bad and so you've probably noticed I've been using this paint a little bit more often I will say that this was a little bit more on the pricey side to get this kit and so I would recommend it if you're already a huge fan of Arteza and you know you love their products and you just want some you know a bunch of little or uh, color variations and things like that however otherwise it might just be not the most cost effective approach now I did so much black on the witch and her cauldron that I just I didn't want this to go completely invisible on that black background so I chose to take my Waverly antiquing wax and yep there it is I way overloaded my brush and carried that overload right on top of my painted bubbling potion. Now, luckily, it wiped off fairly easy. The Arteza paint has kind of like a glossy coat to it. And so it came off really easy. Simple repair, added a little bit more of the leftover green paint that I had on my brush. And then I finished staining the rest of this piece, again, using Antique Wax by Waverly and wiping it off with my preferred method of using a baby wipe. Well, now that everything 
is all dry. It is time to assemble it. And I knew I wanted this to have a little bit more of a lifted effect. And so taking some tumbling tower blocks and I aligned them in this fashion because using the square blocks that you can also get from the Dollar Tree, they're the same height. And so I wanted to use the square blocks in these smaller sections. And although you can cut the tumbling tower blocks, if you have like miter shears, it's not easy. It, I mean, it's a struggle. And so I just avoided that altogether. So I did this to both the witch and her separate cauldron. And then there were a couple Dollar Tree lights that I had to pick from. There was the kind that I could plug in. However, the cord on this was extremely short. And so being that this was going on my wall in the middle of our dining room, I didn't want a black cord hanging from the wall and I would have then had to add an extension cord. Nothing about that says pleasing at all. So <laughs> I clearly opted to go for the option that is battery operated. And I was able to cleverly just kind of sneak this into the back and glue it to the base. And so when I wanna turn it on, all I have to do is lift it just a smidge, flip the switch and the lights are on. I will show you that towards the end. Now, I thought I was done at that point aside from touching up some of my pencil marks. Um, but again, even though it was lifted off of the canvas, it was still very, very monochromatic as far as the uh, witch piece here that I'm using. So taking Silver Lining by Waverly, I decided to kind of highlight the edges of the witch and her cauldron and then using a very, very little amount of paint, I'm kind of just putting a small dab, I'm rubbing it off onto my little plate and then I'm just dusting this over the entire piece just so that it's a little bit easier to see. Now, the only additional thing I did was add a Waverly stained ghost, but that's only because it was sitting around in my stash of uh, like leftovers from projects that it didn't get added to and just can't see that guy go to waste. Here it is all lit up and I really am pleased with how this turned out. On to the next project. While we were at the Dollar Tree, my daughter pointed out this pretty good sized tarantula skeleton. And although I had already done a spider series, I still really liked how creepy this guy was. And I didn't want to take that frame and have it go to waste. And I thought this might be the perfect application for it. So my idea for this one here is to make almost a like a specimen, a framed specimen, I guess. And I just wanted to kind of highlight its existence and make a little bit of a creepy wall decor. So after having spray painted it with a Rust-Oleum's Ultra Matte Black spray paint, I'm going through with a blush brush. I have a ton of these. I was, I had an Ipsy subscription for far too long and I just got 101 makeup brushes, but I really liked this brush for this application. It got into all the nooks and crannies. So I'm again using silver to go through and highlight all of the bones. I'm using the same silver lining by Waverly on my 11 by 14 canvas, also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm again, just kind of dusting it over. And I always tend to start really light. And then I just go through a little heavier and a little heavier until I get the desired look. Now, the only thing I did that I did not capture on camera was I did kind of a uh, dusting of the black chalkboard paint, because again, it was just a little too light, but I also didn't want it to be too dark. I had also taken the frame outside when I sprayed it, when I sprayed it, when I spray painted the spider skeleton, I also spray painted the frame from that previous project. Now I got these off of Amazon. They are stir sticks that do not have the handles on them. And so it's just kind of takes away that additional step. Now I'm more than happy to have these linked down in my description box. I had purchased, I think a pack of a hundred for less than $10. So it was still a really great deal. I am staining these 
in all surfaces except for the surface that I'm going to glue it that I'm going to glue down to <laughs> the canvas because these pieces tend to stick better with an unpainted surface. Also, the staining wax kind of gives a little bit of a waxy surface um, until it's completely dry. And so because I tend to be a little impatient, I know that if I had painted that back portion of it, I was never going to get my hot glue to sit properly. So I chose, I chose good grief. I opted out of painting the back portion. I often will note that I use a baby wipe whenever I'm doing any kind of staining or um, coloring technique where I want the wood grain to show through. I really like the effect that the ingredients of the baby wipe actually add to the paint itself and it just kind of takes off just enough. Now just to add a little bit more dimension I'm just going to sand down the edges to not distress very heavily but just enough to kind of um I want to say detail the edges of these stir sticks. Now I will apologize I have been quite sick this last week and a half. This is about as good as I have sounded however I do feel my brain is still slightly in recovery mode. So on top of y'all having to suffer listening to my nasal congestion and my already at times obnoxious voice. Now you get to hear me with some nasal congestion and my brain working even less than it typically does. Using my good old Sherbonder hot glue, I'm just going to hot glue those stir sticks down to the edge of the canvas to frame it out. And then I'm gonna take the painted frame from the previous project and do the exact same thing. We're just going to attach it down to where that frame meets the uh, wood stir sticks and then also in a couple areas in each corner just to kind of tack it down and give it a little bit more strength. Now that I know where this spider skeleton actually contacts with the canvas itself, those are the little eggs that I'm going to put the hot glue on and that is it. What I love about this is one, it was extremely easy. What I tend to do is if I know I'm going to spray paint, I tend to go out in the garage and spray paint everything at once. So once it's all dry, you just get to put it all together. This is such a fun and creepy little wall piece. On this next piece here, I'm a little torn. I still just feel like something is missing. So as we're kind of working through this, I want to throw a couple ideas at you. Now I feel that the witch's hat really needs some help. So if you want to offer any suggestions mm -hmm. down in the comment box, I would greatly appreciate it. So using these Christmas tags from last year I had left over, I just cut about three inches off the bottom of one of them so that they were alternating sizes. I traced out the shape onto the scrapbook paper that I'm using. It came from like a booklet. Um, it's got like a, it's an all seasons booklet of scrapbook paper. I got it when Paper Studio at Hobby Lobby's items were, I believe, at least 50% off. Um, once I have those cut out, I'm going to attach these using a glue stick. Now, I will say I am rather heavy handed when I do this method. I use quite a bit of the glue stick. It is not uncommon for me to go through even a quarter of the stick, maybe on smaller projects and a half of a, a glue stick in larger projects like this one where I'm using a great deal to <laughs> adhere some scrapbook paper onto these pieces. So it's not, it's not that I feel that I can get away with using less. It's just for me, I'm still trying to perfect my method of applying scrapbook paper with good old Mod Podge, also known on my channel as Marge. <laughs> now, Plaid was extremely kind and they sent me a box of goodies. And in that box of goodies is that little briar roller and it's specifically meant for Mod Podge. Um, I did want to give it a try, kind of show you that it, I mean, it was incredible. I really preferred using that item over my Cricut scraper also. It just did a much better job and I was not afraid at all of accidentally tearing the scrapbook paper. 
As I mentioned, I'm just trying to use up some of these glossier paints that I have. And so I'm using this one also for the pumpkins. And this is just called a bright orange. It is also from Arteza, but you can kind of see the size of the little paint tube. And it, it does okay. I mean, it lasts a while. I will say the paint quality is absolutely amazing though. Um, once I've got these little pumpkin cutouts, now these are from the uh, DIY ornament package. And I decided to do four of them because I was kind of trying to do something to represent the children. And we do have four kids. And let me know if that's a shock to you. Did you know I had four kids? <laughs> to this day, my husband and I look at each other. How do we have four kids? <laughs> um so cutting out the initials to all four of our children, I placed them onto the um, the art piece here in order of oldest to youngest. Now, I have said it a hundred million times and I will say it again. I love these rub-on transfers. The only rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree I've had any trouble with are the gold ones, but I'm almost sure it's user error and they're fine. However, it's just for me, I tend to have a little bit more trouble with them. So now that I've got the scrapbook paper attached, then it was kind of time to add those little embellishments. And I really liked the color difference between that purple and the orange pumpkins. I don't do a whole lot of ribbon in decor aside from at Christmas time. And so I picked up just one roll and I really liked this. I thought it really had basically all of the Halloween colors I lean towards and it was really fun and I knew it was just going to add some personality. Now it matched the scrapbook paper pretty well because the backdrop of the ribbon is also spiderwebs. So I've got those attached on just using some hot glue and then I attached the two tags as you can see me doing here. I had painted the wood palette um, witch hat. Sorry, there goes my brain just deciding to take a little lunch break. <laughs> and really, it's just a matter of kind of trying to figure out where to place it. Now, I had purchased a couple of these and one of them just did not make my storage process and it it broke into about three or four different pieces. So I only had this one left to work with, but I again had the idea of kind of keeping it very easy. You know, I wanted this to be something that if anyone wanted to draw some inspiration on, it was something that wasn't going to take a ton of time. I didn't want there to be an abundance of specialty products. To me, it was just let's just sit down, let's make something fun for Halloween with some bright colors and make it family friendly. That's, I mean, it was pretty much my real thought process through this. Now, um, you know, staggering the pumpkins adds a little bit of whimsy to it. And so I just wanted to kind of keep the character and I knew that I couldn't stop at this point. There just wasn't quite enough personality. So using just a Sharpie. Now, I could have used my black paint pen. Um, however, I just felt that because of the shinier um, sheen that the Arteza paint has. Now, not all of their paint has. This is just the kind that I have. I thought a Sharpie would be a little bit better because I felt the paint pen might take a little bit longer to dry. And it just left more margin of error on my part because I would probably be the one to just stick my wrist or graze my hand over it before it was dry and just undo all the hard work that I had done. Now, I wanted to carry this little ticking pattern in white onto the witch hat just to give it a little bit more of that character and kind of outline the shape of the wood piece itself. Now, this is where I say I just haven't quite committed to much on this witch hat. Now, to decorate the top of it, what I did was I used those wire edgings that I had cut off the ribbon a little earlier and I wrapped them around some dowels and I just kind of made curly cues. I then went into my stash and grabbed some of these berry picks. Um, I want to say some of them were black, they had purple, and then I even grabbed this like orangish red one and that was in their fall section. And I cut the little berries off of the picks and I just kind of hot glued a couple here and there just to give a little bit of color. And that was it. However, 
I just feel like the little hat needs something. Um, I am open to suggestions. If anyone's got any ideas of what I could do, what I tend to do sometimes is I feel like I will over embellish and that's not what I want to do with this guy. I just kind of want to keep him simple, but I don't know. You let me know what you think down in the comments below. So for this next project, it's kind of a twofer, little part one, part two. Um, Dollar Tree has these really nice modern looking um, glass jars. Now I have found them in the dish area. So where you can find like coffee cups, mugs, and um, your plates and chargers. That's where I have found these in my Dollar Tree. And I had thrifted an adorable, like, pumpkin jar that had a real um, Joanna Parker vibe to it. And I just really loved it. And so I kind of wanted to make a couple a little bit more reminiscent of that. So in the idea of keeping this a very simple, just kind of those last minute touches that you want to add here and there, I thought that for my little coffee bar area, if I took one of these jars, added one of some of the, like, last few little pieces of these Halloween rub-on transfers that I have. I also grabbed a skull. Now the skull that I'm using on this one came from a pack that came from Walmart and it was $4. Now the reason I got that pack instead of one from Dollar Tree was these were just a little bit more sinister and menacing. And also they came with like really, really cute teeny tiny itty bitty ones that were in there. And I just can't pass it up when there's an option for something to be itty bitty. So to make a second jar to kind of um, accent this first one, I'm just taking a Dollar Tree pumpkin. I'm going to paint the stem black using my folk art chalkboard paint. And then I'm going to then, as you can see, paint the white lines black as well. And this way it'll have just a little bit more of a color contrast, a little bit more modern in my opinion, it's like a modern vintage. Again, I really enjoy the look of Joanna Parker and I felt that this resembled maybe the color scheme that some of her artwork worked with. Now, when it came to painting the lid, the jar itself is glass and the lid is plastic. So what I do when I'm painting anything plastic is I take a 100% acetone nail polish and I scrub the entire surface that I want to paint. And this just kind of gets rid of any shine and it creates a little bit more of a porous surface and the paint does really, really well with this. Now I do still take it outside once the two coats are done and I spray it with a Rust-Oleum clear finishing spray. Now to attach these little toppers, the skull and the pumpkin, I used a combination of Gorilla Glue and um, Sherbonder Hot Glue. I added a couple of the, like I said, last few pieces of rub-on transfers that I have left from the Halloween transfers that I got from my friend Megan. I really think that these all came out really cute and honestly, they were just extremely easy. They really didn't take time. It's Aside from just letting things dry, that was about the most time consuming part. That's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed these as much as I did and that you're able to draw some Halloween inspiration and get to the Dollar Tree, grab as many of these fun items as you can. I do have a few more Halloween videos coming your way. I'm not quite ready to let go of Halloween. However, I will be starting my Christmas series here very shortly. So stay tuned for more Halloween and buckle up for the Christmas series. Thank you so much again for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow here on YouTube. Not only does it let me know that you enjoyed the content, but it'll also let YouTube know and share my video with more people who might also enjoy it as well. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Have a wonderful day.